Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane again and my lesson for today is all about the parts of a circle and the examples that I'm going to use were based on weeks 3 to 4 of the Mathematics 10, Quarter 2 module, page 13. Before I start, here is an overview of what I'm going to discuss. As you can see, the word circle comes from the Latin word circulus which means a disc. Now, these are the things that I'm going to discuss with you, tangent, diameter, center, radius, chord, and so on. Before moving on to the details of our lesson, let me share with you this very interesting trivia. Did you know that the original Ferris wheel was designed and constructed by George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. as a landmark for the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago? Since then, the generic term Ferris wheel is now used for all such structures and has become the most common type of amusement ride in the parks. Do you know which Ferris wheel is the tallest? It is the high roller in Las Vegas, Nevada, which has a height of 550 feet or 167.7 meters. This was opened to the public in March 2014. But as of now, there is a Ferris wheel under construction somewhere in Dubai, which will be opened by March 2021. Moving on to my lesson, let us first discuss the circumference. So what is a circumference? The circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle or simply the perimeter of the circle as shown in the figure. Number two, the center. The center of a circle is a point inside the circle and is at an equal distance from all of the points on its circumference. So if I'm going to place point A beside the center, this circle will now be called as circle A. So every circle is named after its center. So you have to affix the symbol of circle and then the letter beside the center, circle A. Third is what we call as the radius. So the radius is the segment formed by connecting the center and a point on the circumference. So in this example, you can see our center is point A and the chosen point on the circumference is point B. Therefore, our radius here can be written as segment AP or we can call it segment BA. They mean the same. Moving on to our fourth part, we call it the diameter. The diameter of a circle is the distance from a point on the circumference to the other point on the circumference again but it has to pass through the center so for example we have here a point c on the circumference and a point b on the circumference but it has to pass through the center a so this time we can name now this diameter as segment c b we can also call it segment B, C, and they mean the same. The pip is what we call as the chord of a circle. So what is a chord? A chord of a circle is a straight line segment whose endpoints both lie on the circle or on the circumference. So you might notice that is a chord also a diameter. Okay, to answer that, all diameters are chords but not all chords are diameters okay so for example a chord from point c then it was connected to another point on the cir circumference point d so this chord can be named as segment cd or segment dc and they mean the same now do remember all diameters are chord, but not all chords are diameters, okay? The sixth and the seventh. 
Okay, we have our sector and the arc. So, what is a sector of a circle? A sector is a part of a circle between two radii. So, I have here my radius, segment AB and segment AC. And the region that's colored blue is actually a sector. Okay, so a sector is an area that is enclosed by a by two radii and an arc. Okay, so moving on to number seven, what is an arc? An arc is a part of a circumference at the edge of a sector. So this white edge here okay, is actually the arc. So an arc is just a part of the whole circumference. Okay. Anyway, in my next video, I'm going to explain the differences of the arcs. Okay. Next, number 8, a segment. A segment is different from a sector. What is the difference? A segment is also an area or a region, this blue part, okay, enclosed by a cord, okay, and an arc. So, I have here arc BC and segment BC enclosing the blue region. So, the difference of the segment to a sector is that a sector is enclosed by radii, while a segment is enclosed by a cord in an arc. Now, I have here additional terms that will help you, okay, in relating the other lines, okay, connected to a circle. The first one is the second line. So, what is a second line? It seems like a cord. Yes, every second line contains a cord. As you can see, you have a cord here, which is segment CB. But what is a secant line? So, it is just an infinite extension, line extension of a cord. So, this now will be named as line CB. Okay, remember, it has a different symbol affixed on top of CB because it's already now a line. So, there is a chord here which is a segment CB. Okay. Next is what we call as the tangent line. Now, how is a tangent line different from a secant line? A tangent line usually okay, touches the circle in exactly one point like in my example it touches point b okay of the circumference of circle a so a tangent line to a circle is a line that intersects a circle at exactly one point so to differentiate the tangent line to a secant line it's very easy tangent means intersecting the circle in one point Second line is intersecting the circle in two points. Okay. So, we will now move on to answering learning task one of your module, which is found on page 13. In your answer sheet, use the figure at the right to identify the following. Number one, you're asked to identify the center. Since in the figure... Okay, the center is this and the letter beside it is M. Therefore, the answer to number one is point M. You simply write capital M. Number two, chords. Now, there are actually one, two, and three chords of the circle. We have segment HA, segment TA, and segment DC. So we have three answers. Number three, radii. We have segment MD, segment MF, segment MA. We have three radii. 
And next, number four, diameter. Okay, we can see there's only one diameter here. This one, a cord that passes through the center. So we only have segment DA. And number five, tangent lines. We only have one tangent line here, which is line GE. Now the second line. We have only one second line, and that is line DC. I'm not going to answer number 7 until 10, because this one will be discussed in my next video. Okay, I hope that you watch my next video, which includes the topics, central angles, inscribed angles, and some of the theorems related to those things that I have. Uh, example are... Central Angle Theorem, Inscribed Angle Theorem, some of the Central Angle Theorems, and the different types of arcs like the minor, major, and the semicircle. So with this, I hope I was able to help you in understanding our Week 3 to 4 lesson. So bye-bye!